Hey, good evening, friends. I trust you're keeping well. How was your long weekend? I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Well, uh, and I hope you're one of those uh, of my friends who have uh, subscribed to my YouTube channel. If you haven't, please go ahead and, um, and subscribe. I have some videos that I post every now and then on topical issues, which could be of interest to you. Uh, you could learn something from them. So I propose, I, I, I urge you to go ahead and, and uh, you know, uh, subscribe to it. Now, uh, I've been talking about my revised autobiography. And of course, um, in the last couple of weeks, uh, a couple of people have asked me what prompted me to decide to write my, my story. And, okay, <clears throat> it's just that I think I have a typical experience of the normal Kenyan. And I think it is time these stories were told. Uh, you know, I mean, a lot of the people that I grew up with probably went through the same kind of things. But, um, you know, I was born uh, in the late 50s in a quaint village called Kwakakulu, somewhere near Mali on Mombasa Road. And this village uh, was basically just my relatives and, okay, both, both close and, um, and, and distant relatives. Um, and of course, uh, I went to the local school where, again, most of the people were, you know, just from around. So, so to speak, it's a kind of it was a kind of close society in which there was no influence from outside. That is, everything that we did was uh, homegrown, so to speak, brewed in the Kwakakulu pot, so to speak. So, anyway, um, now one of the things when people broke out would be at Standard Seven when they did their CPE, and they would go to high schools elsewhere. Some went to Machakos, some to Mangu, some to Kaba, actually many to Kaba, others to the local secondary schools. Um, and incidentally, uh, nobody chose Alice High School. And the reason being, which I was told much later, in fact, as late as maybe three, maybe last year, was that, because uh, I had, a, I, had a, I visited one of my teachers, he's now in the 80s, and sadly, the headmaster at that time um, has just passed on. So we are mourning him. But um, so anyway, so I was told that uh, the reason why uh, people are discouraged from choosing Alliance High School is because there was a feeling that it would not take people from schools like those. That it was only for the elite, elite. It was an elitist um, um, institution. So, you know, we were all discouraged from uh, choosing. So we never did, although or other people never did up to the time I did, although they got the requisite uh, qualifications. Now, what happened in my case is there is a primary school about five kilometers away. Actually, our competition used to be a competitor called Kiliku Primary School. And somebody chose in 71 uh, Allies High School. And he was, um, he was uh, chosen. He was, he was given, um, you know. So he was called to Allies High School and he went in 72. So now when I was doing my CV in 72, that myth of elitist had kind of been broken. So I also chose Alliance High School and I joined in 73. When I got to Alliance High School, um, my world changed, not really changed as such, but my, you know, I found a different world. You know, um, communities from everywhere in Kenya, everywhere represented, including uh, some foreigners, both uh, teachers and students from South Africa, um, Rwanda, Uganda, Tanzania, Nigeria, Lebanon, Australia, Britain, you know, you name it. They were all there. So it was a cauldron of, of, um, of cultures. And of course, people were very free. Um, we were all free with each other. So, you know, we, show, we shared a lot and we learned a lot from each other. There was also a major difference in um, what you can call endowment. There are some very seriously rich um, children from very rich families of senior civil servants, uh, great captains of industry, major investors. And there were us from the rural areas. But we mixed and, you know, and also um, there was a challenge that you found that, you know, used to be number one. You get there and personally, I think I was probably number 23, the first out of 29, which was a very close, out of 33. No, I was number 29 out of 33 in the first term. Uh, somebody who used to be number one. So I had a major issue with my parents when I brought the report home. But that's a story for another day. So, of course, I went through uh, the six years in Alliance High School, came out a grown-up, went to the University of Nairobi. Of course, I was used to, in, <clears throat> in high school, the, 
everything was timed. You know, you, you had to be some specific place at specific times. If you are not, you get punished. So, you know, um, you are controlled. Your life was, was, was pretty well laid out. I get to university and I'm on my own. So basically I had to do, and I got money of my own from the boom and all that. And I'd also been teaching before I joined the university. So I had a fairly heavy, had a fairly heavy uh, savings book. So, you know, uh, I, was, I was okay. And uh, then of course I made a mistake and almost repeated my first year <laughs> because I was not going to class. I was having a party in Nairobi. Uh, then I got to work and we have issues with um, some of my bosses for whatever reasons. Um, eventually I got into business, got into problems, um, trusting the wrong people, making wrong choices. But more or less, I think I was a successful businessman. Then came in sickness and I was diagnosed with hypertension and diabetes. Um, and then eventually I came down with cancer to travel all over uh, to India for so long, you know, uh, getting treatment. And also, uh, before I got sick, I used to travel quite a bit. Um, you know, I've been to Europe, I've been to South Africa, I've been in many countries. Uh, okay, not very many, but in some countries with friends. So I had friends from all cultures. So I kind of became socialized in many societies, many, many ways of the world. So now, uh, what I thought then at that point is, that's a fairly eventful uh, life. So why not put it in, tell people how you've been and put it in a way people will enjoy reading. It's not, it's, not, it's not a chronology, but it's basically just a good story. And I think it is about time because I thought um, by doing that, I would also challenge a few people to start doing their own stories, which I'm throwing this challenge now to you. Just think of, you know, Put your story together. It could be interesting. There could be some lessons to teach people, you know, that kind of thing. And in the meantime, please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Otherwise, have a good evening.